The project you were on last, you said it was over a billion. We probably had at the peak a hundred people. A hundred people under one one roof sharing the space is still gigantic. Yeah, I mean, the, so I was the airport's project manager. Um, there were two of us on the project. CM team was like 20 people. And then the design build team and design build team came with all of their sub contractors. So the core subcontractors were all in the room with us. We even got like an airport duty manager to live up there with us. We got someone from the electric shop eventually to live up there with us so that we could do, you know, quick electrical shutdowns and things like that. It was great. It's not free. And a lot of owners, they have to make an investment. I've seen like, even just to have a, you're doing a construction project on a green field or a brown field. And, you know, the general contractor and the trades want to bring their trailer complexes and set up. To make this dedicated space where you're bringing people under the same roof, you could be spending, you know, up to $100,000 to create that shared space where people come together. And some owners don't think it's as valuable. Yeah. And, you know, I hear a lot of great things about what's happening out in the industry these days, especially with most owners and most industries moving into design builds. I, I think that the progressive design build delivery method has really, really helped the collaboration on project teams. I can't even remember how to, I, I don't know why we ever did design bid build. And I, I do know why, and some projects are, that's right, projects, some really straightforward projects, like the airfield projects that I was on when I was in my career, but it's not right for most complex projects. Yeah, I think design the, the design build, progressive design build delivery is, is contributing a lot to the success and the collaboration on a lot of these bigger complex projects. Certainly the big rooms and the co-location and bringing on core subcontractors early get so much value in the early stages. Like I, like I mentioned, you know, we were in programming for T3 West, Termo 3 West for over a year. It was worth every minute because when we got the right people to the table, and we really, you know, took the time to develop the cost model early and accurately, uh, define the scope accurately, define the schedule accurately, we thought, but you know, things happen in the world lead to, yeah. uh, that lead to Change is guaranteed. Yeah. Then when we jumped into design, we could get right to it and it eliminated a lot of the questions and it allowed us to focus on putting out a really exceptional product. Yeah, no, thank you for that. That uh, collaboration is that, it's like a loaded word, but you said you're creating an environment where people can be there, they see each other and, oh, there's an opportunity that we can talk, you know, versus sending, you know, your 55th email or your 1,001 phone call in the moment. That's right. Oh, emails are like the killer of collaboration. Yes. Killer. <laughs> I took a series of courses at San Francisco State, which was great. The airport has, uh, SFO has a, a really good uh, reimbursement program. So it was pretty much taken care of as long as I did my schoolwork. And, and the people in my classes were not all in design and construction. They were in all kinds of different things like filmmaking and one person was like an event planner and you know whatever all the all the different types of projects that you can do in the world uh so i went to a series of classes at san francisco state and then again i took a test again at one of the testing facilities serious and i got my pmp and i i did it at the time because i when i did it was when i was still an engine a junior engineer or you know whatever level of engineering i was at at that my sure. junior and I had a little bit of foresight about the opportunities to go into the project management department uh, at SFO and I think Ivar Satterow who's the, the airport director at the time I think he sent out an email that was like if anybody wants to do this go do it and I was like hm, I'll do it then when the opportunity came up the internal recruitment at SFO came up it was like oh look I'm also doing this in the meantime, and they were like, okay, you got a, you got a little bit of a head on you, you're motivated, <laughs> a shot or whatever. Just got an edge. Yeah. <laughs> Sharp PMP edge. Uh, yeah. Really cool. And I, and I think, you know, for a lot of people that don't know Tonya too well, she's extremely humble and it, it's coming across, but I know you, I know people say really good things about you. I talked to Brad not even two months ago awesome. and he's still fondly talking about the times that you guys got to work together yeah. 
and he misses you. So there you go, Brad. Well, thank you. Shout out from Brad White. He said, I miss you. <laughs> well, th yeah. thank you, Brad. Brad. And he, yeah. you know, he knows that I will say the same thing about him. You know, at the onset of the project, I think we were all like, oh my God, we get to lead this monster of a project. This is amazing. We spent a lot of time sitting around small tables together, learning from each other and being like, I don't know what to do right now. Like, what do we think we should do as a team to get past this really hard challenge? Because not one of the four of us had ever done it. And it was like, okay, you get, you go check with your network. I'm gonna check with my network and let's get back together and decide what to do. As much as I appreciate Brad saying very kind things for me, you know, it goes both ways. He was an amazing partner, so much amazing leadership on that project and, and the projects that I've been on. And the team was just incredible, so. You're still humble, even the way you said it now, Tom. Still, anyone listening, you know, tell tell Tanya in the comments that she's actually. <laughs> I'm not the only one that thinks that you're you're really passionate about learning for learning's sake because you never know you want to be ready. One thing I think that people don't think of as learning is just the day to day connections that you have with people. Which, which I, when you said come be on a podcast, I was like, yeah, hell yeah, I'll do a podcast. You know, I learn from you. Hopefully, you learn something from me, but. I think people will back me up and, and people see this in the way that I um, go about my day or, or my the way that I interact with people, but it, don't rush through a conversation. Don't rush across the office. I mean, every time you have the opportunity to connect with another person, there's so much potential there, right? Like how much can you learn just from, so like you were saying, you know, education doesn't have to be formal.